Good afternoon and thank you for being with us on THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Karen Fuller and for Journey Taylor. Here's a quick look at some of our top stories right now. After a surprise weekend attack on Israel, the death toll is rising today. War rages between Israel and the militant group Hamas. We'll take you to Washington where authorities say getting future aid to Israel remains complicated. And October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. At 1217, we explore some of the challenges women face during screenings for breast cancer. Plus, a big night on THV 11 with tonight's episode of The Price is Right at Night. More on an amazing episode in our entertainment news coming up at 1222. Journey, or journey, journey, pardon me, Simone Thomas. I'm Journey would be here if I wasn't. Simone, what's happening? Listen, Karen, I know the Monday blues are getting to everybody, <laughs> yes. so it's fine. I understand, Aww, but we have a quick check in. It is a little bit warmer today than what we saw over the weekend. Already clocking 80 degrees here in the capital city. Now across central Arkansas, seeing more of the 70s right now, 77 over in Conway, 79 and Pine Bluff. We got a few clouds in the sky, but for the most part, maintaining those sunny skies as we continue throughout the day today, looking to climb to more of the lower to middle 80s under that continued sunshine. For the most part, today going to be a nice, ca calm day, pleasant conditions with lots of sunshine. So definitely take advantage of that. We will have some changes coming up later on in the week that we're going to talk about in your full forecast. So make sure you sit, stick around. Thank you, Simone. Israel, as you know, is at war with Hamas, striking back at the terror organization for its unprecedented and savage attack on Israeli civilians over the weekend. The combined death toll on both sides now exceeds 1,000, and the National Security Council confirms nine Americans are among the dead. CBS reporter Skylar Henry has the story from Washington. Smoke rose above the Gaza City skyline Monday after repeated Israeli airstrikes, hitting more than 800 targets in Gaza so far. The numbers of dead and wounded continuing to climb. The vengeance follows Saturday's unprecedented surprise attack on Israel from the Hamas terror organization. Hamas broke through the barrier Israel uses to contain Palestinians inside Gaza and unleashed fury by land, sea, and air before gunmen went on a rampage slaughtering hundreds of civilians and kidnapping more than 100 people. It seems like Israel had no clue. Former Israeli intelligence officer Gonan Ben Itzak tells CBS News Israel was caught off guard and he expects Hamas will use hostages as leverage to negotiate. Hostages like Noah Argamani, hauled away screaming on the back of a motorbike. Her distraught father says he wants the government to get her back only by peaceful measures. Here on Capitol Hill, House lawmakers are in a holding pattern with that speaker vacancy. Any additional aid to Israel would require congressional approval, which could be complicated without a speaker. The United States stands with the state of Israel. The USS Gerald Ford Carrier Strike Group is on the way to the region, and the Pentagon is working to move weapons to Tel Aviv as questions swirl about Iran's direct or indirect involvement. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces are saying the same thing. Uh, broad complicity for Iran, uh, no sign of any uh, immediate direction, uh, although this is obviously something that we're going to continue to watch very closely. The U.S. is also working to confirm if any Americans are among those being held captive. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And Arkansas's congressional delegates in Washington all condemning the attack on Israel. Senator Tom Cotton is a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. He appeared on Fox News Sunday saying America needs to support Israel with every weapon and tool at our disposal. That takes a form of American military, diplomatic, and political support. The military support may require resupply of things like interceptors for their missile defense systems or artillery shells, rockets, missiles, small arms ammunition. It, it may take more intangible forms of support, like mission planning for what will be very complex urban operations or intelligence support as well. 
And on the House side, 4th District Congressman Bruce Westerman says his office is standing by to help any Arkansans with family impacted in Israel. Representative French Hill of the 2nd District posting over the weekend saying America stands firmly with the people of Israel. In the meantime, Congress is still working to decide who will be the next Speaker of the House. At least two members announcing their bids, current Majority Leader Steve Scalise and the former President Trump endorsed Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio. Endorsements are rolling in for those two Republicans looking to earn the job. Again, Jim Jordan and House Majority Leader Steve Scalise. The need for a new Speaker comes after a group of hard right Republicans and Democrats Democrats voted out Kevin McCarthy last week. Second District Congressman French Hill is a friend of McCarthy and I spoke with Hill right after that vote. It's clear he's furious at some members of his own party. And in my exclusive interview, I asked him about the, his thoughts with the GOP and the possibility of a government shutdown looming next month. Well, Karen, it's good to be with you. I think uh... It's important to recognize in this whole process that the people who voted against Kevin McCarthy uh, have eight different reasons and eight different uh, thinking patterns. This is not an organized group. Uh, and uh, they, they claim to be concerned about the fiscal situation of the United States. And if they were, Kevin McCarthy would still be speaker. So there's a lot of personal vendettas, I think, involved in this. And of course, they've now completely disrupted exactly what they said they were for, which is passing the individual appropriations bills. So, so do you here, think we um, can avoid another shutdown if, well, if what has we to, need to We need to go into conference on these spending bills with the Senate. Okay. People are talking, uh, the Senate and the House are collaborating on how to avoid a shutdown mm -hmm. while this works but finished. But look, I, I can't say this more bluntly. Uh, kicking McCarthy out of office is going to make that harder. And I'll just leave yeah. it at that. Let's talk about the rhetoric. The rhetoric yeah. is ugly. It is it is no holds barred. And those of you now who are on a one-week recess are being criticized by this congressman in particular for having taken a week off when matters are so pressing. Some might argue they wouldn't be so pressing had he not pushed to remove the Speaker of the House. The rhetoric in general is getting ugly to just a viewer at home. You want to wonder what is happening to the Republican Party and what would you respond to that with? Look, the rhetoric on both sides of the aisle in the nine years I've served has really deteriorated. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I get the frustration people have, but of course, the only reason that we're shut down this week is because of Matt Gates. There's no other person responsible for it. There's no other person that's told more misleading nonsense for the past few months. Every assertion he's made about Kevin McCarthy on the House floor or the process here over the past nine months is a complete fabrication. And 96% of the Republicans in the House agree with me. 96% voted to keep McCarthy as Speaker only eight people work with Democrats to remove him for their own selfish uh, reasons. Uh, so uh, I, I still stand with, generally, I try to keep my temper and my cool. It doesn't always work. Uh, but look. Uh, it's been uh, said that when French Hill gets mad, now we need to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I heard that last week, maybe, yes, from a yes. few people. And I can't help but ask, why not a House Speaker Hill? Well, I am a busy camper uh, on House Financial Services Committee and the Intelligence Committee and the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, and so really, I've got to defer to uh, the, that decision to my colleagues. And you can see much more with Congressman Hill on THV 11 Plus. That's our streaming service for Amazon Fire TVs and smart devices. Happening today, the record continues of no one winner getting the Powerball lottery jackpot. The last drawing was Saturday, opening up the possibility of a win tonight. The jackpot now over one and a half billion dollars. That's the fourth largest prize in lottery history. If you win tonight's Mega Millions jackpot, the question is, would you want everyone to know about it? Brandon Lewis from our National Verify team looks into whether you can stay anonymous if you should be the one who wins the jackpot.
Verify here with your fast fact. There's a lot of money at stake in the upcoming lottery jackpot, and many of you emailed us asking, can you stay anonymous if you win? Our sources are the state lottery commissions, Powerball, and Mega Millions. Powerball and Mega Millions are played in nearly every state. They all require you to provide identifying information to claim your prize, but each state then makes its own rules about whether to release the winner's name to the public. If you win the Powerball or Mega Millions jackpot, these 17 states will keep your information private if you'd like. But that doesn't mean you're out of luck everywhere else. For example, Colorado only releases the winner's first name and the first initial of their last name. Other states, like Florida or Arkansas, wait a few months or years to reveal the winner's name. And some states have loopholes that allow you to claim through a trust or LLC, which lets you hide your real name. Some states also have exemptions for victims of stalking or domestic violence. With your Fast Fact, I'm Brandon Lewis. Now we're seeing sunny skies across the metro today. How long is that going to stick around though? I'll have that answer coming up in your full forecast shortly after this break.